The White House will set new rules of the road Tuesday for driverless cars. The Obama administration says the federal government should be in charge of regulating self-driving cars because they're being controlled by computers, not people. Historically, states have determined who can obtain a driver's license. The Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox says states should stick to registering cars and dealing with liability issues during a crash. CBS News transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve spoke with Fox about why the government has decided to take the wheel. Look, um, what's happening right now is potentially a 100-year wave of innovation into the automobile that we haven't seen since the automobile was actually created. And what we have a responsibility to do as an agency is to help uh, the safety advocates, the manufacturers, and the states that also regulate um, the operation of automobiles to understand how to build safety and safety culture into this emerging area from the beginning. And I think what's so revolutionary about what we're doing with the policy is that it's not forcing a choice between safety and innovation. It's actually showing how both things can happen at the same time. Chris Van Cleve joins us on the phone from Washington. Chris, in that interview you just had with the secretary, he mentions a hundred-year moment of innovation in the automobile industry. That's a big deal. So what exactly is the federal government proposing in response? Well, right now, the rules are essentially akin to the Wild West. You know, they vary state by state. Some states have adopted some sort of guidelines about who can test uh, automated driving vehicles. Uh, other states haven't. So this is uh, viewed by the, by the government really as the, the foundation that you will see regulations built upon. Uh, they had been promising to get this out this summer. The autonomous driving industry, the people developing this, had been uh, calling for and, and really waiting on some sort of guideline from the government. I think what's significant here is this will not be regulation. This will be a policy that basically suggests or recommends the industry follow these guidelines uh, because to make a rule, uh, which is a regulation by the Department of Transportation, can take years. So this sort of voluntary policy, they can roll out a lot faster. And at the heart of that is a 15-point safety assessment um, that the government is asking uh, autonomous vehicle developers to basically fill out and, and adhere to it as a way of communicating how they're addressing things like how and where the vehicle will function and operate, um, you know, what's your, how are you validating your methods for testing and verification. Uh, it calls for privacy considerations, cybersecurity, uh, as well as, you know, questions about the human-machine interface, crashworthiness, uh, what happens in the event of an accident, does, uh, how does a driver re-engage the autonomous driving after an incident, uh, this 15-point safety assessment, which the DOT says they would like to see one day become mandatory, but that could require an act of Congress. So for now, it's going to be a voluntary framework upon which regulations will be built over time. So this is a big deal. This is a first draft uh, from the Department of Transportation, something they hope will become a formal, non-advisory, but required part of operating uh, autonomous vehicles on, on everyday roads. Here's the key question for me, though. Help me understand why the federal government thinks it should get involved with something that, historically at least, has been up to states to decide. Well, so some parts of, of driving is up to the states to decide. Licensing, registration, that kind of thing. But when you're dealing with uh, their concern and why they're sort of calling dibs on regulation here, uh, they want to be clear that the rules are the same as vehicles cross state lines. They don't want a situation where you have 50 different sets of rules. So if you're driving a car from New York into New Jersey or the car is driving itself from New York to New Jersey, the rules suddenly change when you go through the tunnel. And what do you anticipate the industry reaction is likely to be to these uh, guidelines? So keep in mind, these are voluntary. You don't have to adhere to them. So the industry so far uh, the trade group that represents autonomous driving developers has applauded the government for getting this out. Uh, you know, that I think a lot in the industry had wanted this out sooner. Uh, the government had said it would be done by the summer. We are, I guess, still in meteorological summer, so they, they more or less reached their deadline there. Um, there's a second section of these guidelines that are sort of aspirational. 
in that they would require Congress to give DOT and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration additional authority. And I think if that moves forward, that's where you may see some pushback because it asks for the ability to go in and pre-approve or pre-certify new technologies before it goes onto the market. Right now, automakers, auto, de auto developers are, are allowed to self-certify. Um, DOT says it would be great if they had the ability to order immediate cease and desist if there was an imminent hazard. Right now, they can't do that. They have to work through what can be an arduous recall process. Uh, and then they, they're, one of the open questions is, well, now, since we're talking about computers driving cars, how do necessary software updates get handled? Is that like a recall? Uh, you know, so that's a gray area that may have to be solved with legislation. So I think that's where you can see real controversy is if you see uh, the regulatory part of the Department of Transportation, NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, get new teeth. Uh, that, that could be where you see real pushback when you're talking about the government coming in and looking at your technology and telling you whether or not it's, it's okay to bring it to market. All right, Chris Van Cleve, uh, guiding us through a 100-year inflection point here in the evolution of automobiles. Really exciting time, I imagine, to be a transportation correspondent. You know, I've always wanted to ask you, as a transportation correspondent, when you're out there on planes, renting cars, on trains, are you like the feared restaurant critic who walks in and everyone, like, fawns over you? I mean, how, what's it like? <laughs> No, no, absolutely not. All right. Well, I always wanted to ask you that. The answer is no. It should be. I wish. It should be that way. All right. Chris, I agree. Chris Van Cleve reporting for us from Washington. Thank you very much. No problem.